I'm Mila Shtrimamit from Dr. Amir Amedi's lab here at Umrik in the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And in my last vlog, I talked about the background of my research and how we developed a training program for sensory substitution in which we teach blind people how to see using sounds. Now I'm going to give you a short demonstration of what that means and show you that you can learn how to see with sounds uh, in a very short process, in a couple of minutes. So basically, uh, Seeing with sounds means we translate uh, visual images into sounds using a predicted algorithm uh, using a software called the voice. And that means that in each image, the vertical axis is encoded by a frequency. So something that's higher up in the image gives a higher frequency tone. The horizontal, horizontal axis is encoded by time. So the image is scanned from left to right. And you'll hear first things that come from the left side of the image and then things that come from the right and the brightness of each pixel is encoded by the loudness of the sound. So that something that's very bright or white would sound would give a, a strong sound and black would give zero sound. So just a demonstration of what that means. Try and tell me what that sound, the next sound, is supposed to represent. So what you heard was a one tone sound that lasted for a while. So that means we have a horizontal line lasting for a long period of time with only one frequency or very uh, narrow bandwidth. <clears throat> so that means we have a horizontal line. Okay, next, what does that mean? Right here you could hear something that starts off with a high frequency tone and then slowly descends into a low frequency tone. That means uh, that if the image was scanned from left to right, it means it would give us a descending diagonal line. And now, that's the opposite, right? You have a sound that starts off with low frequencies and then goes up. So we have a rising diagonal line. And now this. This is actually the combination of those two lines. So this gives you the shape of the letter V. And you've just read your first, your first letter using the voice sensory substitution. And we teach blind people how to process gro sounds of growing complexity that represent really complicated, really complicated images. So we start with lines and orientations and stuff like that, and we move up to things that are much more complicated. So I could probably teach you in about one hour how to read the entire alphabet and give you a small demonstration of how to see sketches of faces uh, in probably two hours. Now, following about 70 hours of training, our participants can do really amazing things, and that's people who have been blind from birth, have never, seen, never had any visual experience, and they're really excited about that. And they can do things like walk around in really, comp really um, clouded, cluttered corridors and avoid obstacles, and they can see that there's a person standing in front of them, they can see their facial expression, they can see if they have glasses or long hair, or um, identify other objects in their surroundings. The first part of training we do in front of a, a, a computer, as I've just shown you, shown you now, using uh, pictures that we've taken in advance and that teach how to uh, uh, process growing complexity images. At the next stage of training, we give people these devices, which are just a very simple device of a small webcam placed on, on top of sunglasses. And they wear those around these are connected to a laptop, or it can actually be connected to um, a smartphone even, and to earphones, and people can walk around with this and see whatever is in their surround, in their environment. So the thing that um, clued us the most about how the blind people feel about this is that none of them had agreed to look at their image in the mirror. Uh, and we were really surprised by that, but apparently, uh, and they told us later, that they felt that was uh, too strange for their self-definition as blind people. And they just wouldn't do it. They looked at us, they looked around, they've done really amazing things, and they still wouldn't agree to look in their own image in the mirror. Our hope is that we'd be able to uh, both enable a lot of blind people to use this type of sensory substitution and other type of devices that we uh, develop in the lab, in order to learn to see and also uh, supplement uh, critical aspects in uh, more invasive methods of, sen of sensory rehabilitation like retinal implants by teaching people how to see um, later in life. 
and I hope you've enjoyed this vlog and if you like more information you're very welcome to uh, look to check out the lab website at brain.ug.ac.il. Have fun!